Creating time assets and reducing time debts will make you successful. Hello everyone, it's Mazin. Welcome to the Maximal Life. How many times have you heard these sayings? All of us have the same 24 hours in a day. Or you can only get so much done in a day. What if I were to tell you that we can create more time from the time we have? That we can effectively make more time to do more than the average person does. I'll share how you make time from time in just a minute. You see, we often mistake busy for progress. We mistake activity for achievement. Why do so many processes take so much time, in spite of our best efforts, not to let them do so? Why do some people manage to do so much more than others, though both have the same 24 hours in a day to work, achieve, grow, learn, and enjoy? Time management is about more than managing short-term productivity. Most productivity tools and tips focus on the same things. Resolve not to check your emails every few minutes. Do not meander on social media. Consciously shorten your phone calls. Limit unnecessary meetings. Prioritize your task before the agendas of others. Great strategies all, but are they enough? These strategies focus on short-term gains. They do not increase long-term efficiency. Nor do they streamline processes for the future. The key is to utilize time right now in a way that creates more time for you in the future. Maximal achievers make their time count, rather than count the time they spend. Highly successful and productive people have devised ways in which they manage to create the greatest output in the least amount of time. For instance, maximal achiever Sir Richard Branson is set to wake up at 5 a.m. to work out. According to Branson, this boosts his productivity. Why? Because he achieves twice as much when he is fit. Because working out also keeps his brain fit. Author, entrepreneur, and creative tour de force, Ariana Huffington, ensures that she takes breaks through the working day. A visit to the cafeteria with a colleague or just having lunch away from her work desk she reports that a 20-minute recharge is better than saving time by working while you eat. If you're thinking, well, there just aren't time assets in my profession, open your mind up to it. There is a major time asset to be utilized in your profession. All you have to do is just see it. Here's a cool one. Comedian Dan Nainian took the time out to set up a voice recognition software in his phone and computer. That initial time investment saves him valuable time every day as he speaks his material into his devices and the software now transcribe his words for him. This frees up his time as much as it frees up his creative mind. Each of these maximal achievers set up systems that, yes, did take some time to set up now, but provide great time savings forevermore once they are set. We can all have more time to work, to spend with our family, to devote to ourselves, our passions, and our health. The key is to create time assets and reduce time debts. Time is a currency. Like any currency, time can be categorized into assets and debts. Time assets are actions taken now that save you time in the long run. Time debts are actions taken now that save you time right now, but cost you more time over the long run. A good example of a time asset is creating a comprehensive FAQ page for your product or service. While it could take uh, some considerable time and effort to put everything down in one piece and in one place, answer all the possible queries and clarify any doubts potential customers could have, in the long run, this is sure to save you considerable time that would otherwise have spent answering questions or dealing with complaints and queries. The time is spent creating the FAQ is to be thought of as an investment, one that would reap returns in terms of time saved over a long period of time. On the other hand, there are also those actions or choices that one could make today which may cost more time in the future. This is called racking up time debts. A good example is scheduling meetings, lots of them, 
even those that you could do without. Ever have the meeting, about the meeting, 10 minutes after that meeting? Ask yourself whether these meetings are absolutely essential or whether the matters could be discussed and resolved by other means. Once you've committed to regular weekly meetings, you have committed your time on an outer recurring basis whether you need the meeting that week or not. In the words of John Kenneth Galbraith, economist and diplomat, meetings are indispensable when you don't want to do anything. Now, let's look at the mechanics of time as a currency. A 2010 study by the American Psychological Association examined the way that we look at the past and the future. I always remember the study because of its title, When the Future Feels Worse Than the Past. Doesn't that just hit it on the head? Doesn't that just sum up the feeling you get when you are off track? When your passion has become a burden and when the future feels worse than the past. Let's take a look at this study, so you never have to feel that way again. The study found that we tend to be more upset about the things that may or may not happen in the future than we are about the things that have indeed already happened. We know we cannot change the past, but we do believe that we have some control over the future, so we are forward warriors. What does that mean? That means creating time assets is essential to feeling peaceful, positive, and passionate today and in the future. Let me tell you, knowing that a system has been put in place, a system that will save you time in the future for the work you are most passionate about, is a key element in any creation process, be it a new business, a new book, a new TED talk. You get to switch from asking yourself, what do I need to do today? To what do I get to do today? Systems switch your daily practice from searching for time to enjoying the time you have already made to do everything you love to do. Long game systems are more time efficient than short game goals. Putting those long game systems in place has a long term payout because you are creating time assets that afford you the mental space to focus on your true passion. Now taking the time to set up the systems is choosing to rack up time debts while you stay in the short game, the game of short-term goals. Here's the thing, time debts are subtle and they seem small, but they are like the undertow of the ocean. You know it's there, you know you should avoid it, but you got to keep surfing so you just Keep riding it out until the wave is crashing over you and throwing you against the rocks because you're too tired to fight against the undertow of time debts. They all seem like something you'll surely fix in the near future, but it's that very thought that keeps you in the subtly mounting exhaustion of a life in time debt. Let me tell you, almost everyone I help is stuck in the short game. They are in so entrenched in the short game, they actually believe it's the longest game in town. We've all been blinded like that before. So how can you tell if you are stuck in the short game, if you are racking up time debts? A time debt is anything that commits you to doing meaningless, repetitive tasks in the future. As maximal achievers, we employ systems that prevent the I gotta do everything myself, just keep my nose to the grindstone kind of life, because that's not why you got into this. You got into this to serve the world. How can anyone serve the world, how can anyone make a truly positive impact on the world if they can barely see 30 minutes ahead? They can't. That's not the maximal life. The maximal life is one of time abundance. We get to exuberantly serve the world from our overflow of positive energy and passion. Here's a personal example. For years, I had chafed against the time that my TSA check-in process took at the airports. The last thing we want to do after a drive to the airport is wait in a crowded, congested, usually long line of people spouting their complaints to anyone in earshot. Well, I could have cleared up all these issues by signing up for the Clear Me service. I kept thinking that I did not have time to sign up for the service. 
Then, one day, I decided to arrive at the airport early just for the clear me process. It did not take long, just maybe about 15 minutes to give some personal information and some biometrics, but in effect, this was an investment that I made. That 15 minutes I spent then helped me save time every single time I traveled after that. Create time assets and reduce time debts today. Let's dig in with the example of your workplace. Are all of your processes as streamed as possible? Consider some ways you can easily cut down on time spent on repeat admin tasks. Can you use software to send out repeat responses to common queries instead of typing them out every time? You can. You can set up autoresponders in your email system. You can use invoicing and accounting tools to send out monthly invoices automatically. Maybe let fix systems be made each month through standing instructions with your bank. If you use a lot of spreadsheets, then I got one little tip for you here. Set up macros to make routine tasks quicker. Look around. You are sure to find potential time makers and time debts alike in your workplace. Start now. Imagine having routine tasks completely off of your to-do list. How great would that be? How great will it feel to spend time planning your growth and expansion? To crack deals and get projects completed before deadlines? To do the very thing that contributes directly to your bottom line, your health, your family's well-being, and happiness. Let's put this into action. Do this today. Evaluate the hours in your day. Pick one aspect that is a drain on your time on a regular basis. One thing, a repeat task that is unavoidable. Set up a system to automate it. Set up a system that takes care of it in the future. Plan this time asset and get it done. Pick one aspect right now. Maybe it's invoicing, document sharing, scheduling meetings, incoming phone calls, FAQs, whatever that you need. Pick one and then systemize it. Once you do one, then do one a month until your days are more peaceful, positive, and passionate. Each time you up-level into a new state of positive flow, you will have the increased mind space to look around at other aspects of your life. Listen, you're about to get so good at this. We started with the example of your workplace. Let's open our minds to look into your family life. Now you will see the time makers and time debts in this area, and you can set up systems that bring more peace, positivity into your family life. For example, calendar sharing with your significant other to reduce tedious discussions focused on checking off to-do list rather than enjoying conversations focused on sharing. Another time asset you can create auto subscriptions to the millions of household items that can send you on a tedious run into the grocery store instead of spending time with your family on your day off. I bet you are starting to come up with time assets you can create in your family life. By now, you can see when you change your mindset that we all just have that 24 hours in a day to get things done and we all have so much to get done in a day. You can now replace that mindset with one that says, what system can I put in place to make my time peaceful, positive, and passionate? That's the way of the maximal achiever. That's living the maximal life. If you like what you have seen and heard, please subscribe.